Vinyl records over the last five years have gone through an insane resurgence or rebirth. So for the next 10 minutes or so, I'm going to ramble on about that in this short documentary. My name is Max, and I spend most of my time in places like this all across Dublin. I've been collecting records since I was about 17. It's about three years ago now. You start with your, your favorite albums. You work your way up to a bit of a collection. You find the bootlegs. You find the singles. You find colored vinyl, and you become obsessed. But today I'm going to be talking about the Dublin vinyl scene. What's that like? Dublin is home to many small gigs. And then there's... So, the vinyl scene. Let's talk about it. Dublin's vinyl scene is quite vibrant and common. There are shops that sell records everywhere. To begin, there's Tower Records, the Kingpin, and it's amazing. There's Golden Discs, which is quite overpriced, and there's Mojo's, which is quite possibly the smallest shop in Dublin, but it's my personal favourite. There's Clodig Records, which is country, if that's your thing. Then there's Sound Cellar, which is cool because it's actually underneath a subway and you'll find records across Temple Bar and then maybe some not so fitting places. And then there's, you know, the record shops that just, you know, accept your request for an interview. You show up and then they actually say no. <coughs> so the price of vinyl in Dublin. Let's talk about it. So you can find some classic albums across Dublin for very cheap. And then in other shops, which will not be named, you can find some horrifically overpriced records, but it depends where you go, and it depends what the vinyl is. Uh, they can be quite, quite pricey in some shops, but it could be worth it. So with that, let's talk about the types of vinyl. We'll begin with the seven inch, or the 45, or the single. It's called a 45, as it spins at 45 revolutions per minute on a turntable, eight to 15 quid in Dublin, it's a bargain. And the 10 inch, or an EP, as it usually is, 10 to 25. These can range from different prices, but it's my personal favorite. And then the classic, the 12 inch, which is what you'll see most record shops stocking. These can be quite pricey and they can be quite cheap. It depends what it is, it depends where you look, but here's a size comparison. So as we've seen, records can come in all different shapes and sizes or gimmicks. Let's take this Nirvana box set, for example, that I have. It's a bootleg, so it's not official, but it's a picture book, and the records actually come in between the pictures, which is incredible. And then there's this My Chemical Romance vinyl, which is a Record Store Day exclusive, which weirdly comes with a death certificate. I guess it fits the mood, but what is that? But moving on from whatever that was, let's talk about Discogs. So Discogs, short for Discographies, is a website similar to eBay that is exclusive to physical music. So they sell records, cassettes, CDs, flexi discs, whatever you could desire. So it's fantastic. Now records can cost a lot of money, as we've just seen. So let's just take, for example, that Queen record that I showed you earlier. Here it is. On Discogs. So it was 50 quid in that unnamed shop. Let's check it here. 17 euro is the cheapest on Discogs. This is just a fantastic service. Now I personally have ordered a few items off Discogs that have not been available in Ireland usually and it's been a godsend. But as I mentioned earlier my favorite record shop in Dublin is called Mojo's. And they stock exclusively from Discogs. They sell bootlegs, like Oasis at Nebworth, which has never been officially released. They sell all types of stuff like this. This Nirvana, the Red Album, which is a compilation of B-sides that weren't used on their records. And then this Oasis record, Live at the Point in Dublin, which you just would never find in any Terror records, which is amazing. Now, I know I've been praising vinyl for the past five minutes, and I'm not slagging phones. I love music on my phone, I swear, but let's keep it going. So one of my lecturers, Barney Taylor, kindly agreed to do an interview with me for this documentary as he runs 
a thing called the D8 Soul Club in Dublin, which is a monthly event, a nightclub that just plays vinyl, which is a fascinating concept. Now, Dublin has its healthy music scene, but I'd never heard anything like this. So with that, let's listen to Barney. Hi, everybody. I'm Barney Taylor, author and academic, and hopeless vinyl addict. (laughs) Tell us about what you do in terms of vinyl. Well, it goes back to the 80s when I was first collecting vinyl. I was at school. It was a great period for collecting vinyl. And then by about the early 90s, mid 90s, when I went to university, I gradually started losing all of my singles and 12 inches. Mm -hmm. And then effectively by then had replaced my vinyl collection with CDs. Because mistakenly I thought CDs were the future. But in the last three and a half years, myself and some friends set up a um, a soul club called the D8 Soul Club. And it was really something for us to do but actually it reinvigorated my love of vinyl. So I've spent the last three and a half years collecting original soul, funk, gospel and disco disco vinyl on seven and 12 inch. Um, As a club, our policy is original vinyl only. So we have some great DJs who have some amazing 45s, which may well be worth thousands of euro. And the concept of it is that we won't play CDs, we won't play represses, we won't play play re-releases. If you don't own the single, don't play the single. So for me personally, collecting vinyl has taken me back to my childhood. People come from all over Ireland and indeed from the UK mm-hmm. to the nights. Uh, we've had some great guests. We are every two months at the moment. And funnily enough, I have a, a night tonight. I DJ as well, which is all part of the fun of it. Cool. And I've just met some amazing people. There has been a soul scene in Dublin since the 70s, really. So really, as a, a blow-in, I've just been lucky to meet some people who've got amazing record collections and love sharing them, and people love dancing. So everyone's happy. What's the age demographic for these nights? That's a good question. There isn't one. I mean, people like myself who were mods and scooter boys in the late 70s, early 80s, when two-tone was first around, are still mods today, even though we don't wear parkas and have scooters. But we aim to get um, a wide range of people in, so we get everybody from 18 to 60. I mean, I've been buying, uh, I don't spend much money on my records because I don't have the budget. Mm -hmm. But if you're prepared to dig, um, I don't find many records in record shops in Dublin because I buy most of my vinyl online Mm -hmm. from Discogs or eBay. But for me, it's much like being a crate digger and I've always loved it. So finding a track that no one else plays and then either emptying a dance floor or filling a dance floor it's part of the joy, really. I mean, it's, it's, we all have something we love. Why are originals so important to you? Because they're impossible to find. and You don't find them in shops. You don't find them in shops, but I think it's the same question as why should you watch Lauren Hardy in black and white and not colorized? And I think fundamentally it's because there is something of great emotional and cultural value of going back to the source and finding original things. Mm-hmm. It's like collecting books. Mm-hmm. People like to collect first editions it's like paintings or whatever it is I think it's just for me personally I could easily put on a soul night where we just played CDs all night and I've got loads and loads of soul CDs and I could play some of the most amazing soul tracks ever made but that would be pointless to me would like being would be like being in Weatherspoons and playing the jukebox for me part of the excitement is knowing we have a DJ, we had a DJ two years ago, Greg Belson, who is one of the world's leading authorities on gospel music and moved to LA to be closer to the source of some of this music. He brought a single with him which had never been played before in Europe. And so the palpable excitement of actually people waiting for this record to be played, I remember when he played it, people heard the bass line and they suddenly went right and everybody filled the floor because they probably knew in their lifetime they'd never hear that record again live. Yeah. It's like seeing bands, yeah. you know, so I think originals are very important on our scene, but it's a personal thing. Some clubs won't be original vinyl only, but I think that kind of detracts from the thrill 
because it's partly like filmmaking or whatever it is. I think there's something nice about finding an old print of Caligari, for example, and then showing it on 16mm rather than just watching a DVD. Mm. There's something beautiful about the interplay between digital and analogue. Mm. And so also with obscure soul singles where there aren't many, they always have a story. So it might be that uh, an American serviceman was in Germany in the early 70s and recorded a single with some friends and they only printed 10 of them. Mm. And then if you're lucky enough to own that single, having looked for it for three or four years, it may be that it, it was owned by two other people. So there's a cultural history yeah. attached to vinyl. But I mean, my vinyl is someone else's books or whatever it is. So with your scene with the D8, yeah. is that a popular concept? Because I'd never heard of a club that plays vinyl before and I collect vinyl. So there's I loads. Is there? There's loads. We've been going three and a half years and our kind of blow-ins what is Soul has been a, a regular on the Dublin scene for a few years. Pow City up in Thomas House, they have monthly Soul nights. There have been uh, mod clubs since Bubbles in the 80s. The Soul scene in Dublin and indeed in Ireland, because it isn't just in Dublin, mm -hmm. is very well established and has been around since the 80s. Okay. And um, many of the people that I've been lucky enough to become friends with have been collecting records since the 80s. And unlike me, who carelessly lost all of mine, have still got them. And in fact, some of them are coming this evening and we're all getting very excited about what people might play. So that's the vinyl scene in Dublin. So to finish it, I won't ramble on about it anymore. Go outside, have a dig through some crates in some record shops, give the independent ones some business, and just listen to the tunes. Your turntable isn't dead. Thank you.